Hi everyone, Aiden here with the trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install these Weston R5 modular Nerf bars on our 2023 Ram 2500. So these are going to give you a nice wide step, 5 inches wide to be exact, to help get up into your truck. With them being 5 inches wide, they're definitely a lot wider than most other ones out there. So if you're looking for something that's going to give you a good footprint, easy to step onto, even with some larger boots or shoes, this is going to be a great way to do it. With these particular bars, they go wheel to wheel. So they extend a little bit back from the cab and give us an extra step pad right here. So if we had a toolbox or something in our bed, we've got easy access to it right here. Got plenty of room to get into the bed here or grab stuff out of a toolbox. And with the extra isolator bracket, we aren't experiencing any extra creaking or stress on this part of the bar. And I feel really well supported here. Those polymer step pads are gonna be UV resistant and give a good amount of traction. They've got deep ridges in there to help drain water away. And then on top, there's some light ridges, again, just to help provide some traction so you're not slipping if it's wet. The main body of the bar is a black powder coated steel, nice and heavy duty and rust and corrosion resistant. And the end caps on the end help prevent water from getting in and rusting out internally. If water were to get in, it is open on the bottom too, so it would just kind of fall right out. And then all of the bracketry holding it in place is custom fit for your Ram. So getting it installed, while it is a bit more involved, it is going to be a custom fit. The one complaint I do have aside from the installation process is the covers here on our brackets. They just feel kind of like an afterthought. One thing I liked about the install is all the brackets, all the hardware, all the pieces felt very high quality and it went on really easily. I didn't have any fitment issues. But with these, I did notice some fitment issues and they just didn't feel very good quality. Personally, I would maybe just leave them out and just go with the bare brackets, but that's just my personal taste and functionally they don't really add anything. So if that's something that isn't super appealing to you, you don't have to put them on. And speaking of that install process, it is fairly straightforward. It just has a lot of bolts, a lot of brackets, and a lot of different pieces to it. And the instructions aren't super well documented, but that's what we're here for. So let's walk through that process with you now. Starting off the installation, I recommend getting all of your hardware, all of your brackets, pretty much everything that you're gonna need for the install out, unpackaged, and sorted. There's a lot of hardware here, and it can be very confusing if you don't keep it organized. The other thing is, again, the brackets. So I've already done the passenger side install, and I've got all of our driver side brackets laid out. Now, there's gonna be four sets of brackets. The one that goes most towards the rear of the vehicle is going to be this very long one that is going to have a D stamped onto the bracket, and the same goes for all the other driver side or passenger side brackets, which have a P. This smaller upper bracket piece will have an R on it for a rear. That's gonna be the same for both sides and that's gonna get paired up with the larger bracket. I'll set that down for now. Moving on back towards the front of the vehicle, we're going to have this bracket that will be our third one. You can kind of tell which one is which here by these smaller holes in the front in addition to the main mounting holes up top. That's going to be very similar on the passenger side as the driver's side here. Moving towards the center bracket. That one's going to be the most basic. There's two others that look very similar to this for the center and the front on the passenger side. And this one's going to just be for the center on the driver's side. Then for the very front one on the driver's side, I'll bring this up to you. This one's going to look a lot like the rear one for our driver's side, except it doesn't have the hole up top. I'll put them up side by side so you can kind of see that comparison. Otherwise, they're going to be very similar. So that's how you can kind of tell them apart. The instructions do have diagrams that show all of these brackets assembled for the passenger and the driver's side, so you can use that to help keep them straight. But just so you know, that's where we've got laid out right now. It's gonna be hard to kind of tell where we're at under there, so I'm gonna give you an idea of where the brackets are gonna get mounted. You can come underneath your vehicle, and right at the very bottom, there's gonna be these two small holes next to each other. That's gonna help us figure out the spacing, because if we go up underneath, 
towards the back of the rocker panel. That's where our mounting locations will be. This is more just to give you an idea for where we're gonna be working once the camera gets underneath. If you move back your vehicle, eventually you'll hit another set of those two holes. That's for our center bracket. And then again, moving on back, the other set of two holes for our rear bracket. And for the very rearmost bracket, we'll get to that later. It's important to note that for the driver's side, basically every bracket's gonna be different. So we'll walk through that process with you now. The front driver's side is going to get two of these rib certs. That's going to get inserted into the two hexagonal holes in the bottom corners of this plate here. And our bracket will go up against that. Now it's gonna be hard to see with the way this bracket is oriented. We're gonna take our M8 hardware, the bolt, lock washer, and flat washer, feed it in through the back and into those rib certs. With our hardware loosely threaded in, we're gonna run down those M8 bolts just to help those rib certs expand and become a permanent installation. Then we can loosen it back up because for right now, pretty much everything we're installing is going to stay loose. And with those M8 bolts loosened and the rib certs all expanded and secured, you'll notice we're up in the air now. While it's very easy to do on the ground, you've got plenty of room to work and it's not necessary. It's a lot harder to show you what's going on with it on the ground. So we lifted it up to give you a better view of all the different bolts that we're attaching so you can get a better idea of it. But just know that with it on the ground, it is totally doable at home. Moving up the bracket, those two holes that we've been using to kind of designate where we are and figure out our position, we're gonna take these cap screws and put a washer on them, these M6 screws, pass it through the front, and we've got a flange nut that will thread on the back. We're gonna do that for both of the holes on this bracket, again, leaving them loose. For our center bracket, we're gonna start with our M8 nut plate. That's gonna get slid through the slotted hole that we exposed by removing the tape. And eventually, the nut on that plate will get lined up with this hexagonal hole right here. In the meantime, we need to hold this in place and keep it from falling in. That's where this plastic square comes in. That will just thread onto the nut plate. And once it's all the way down, you can see it'll hold itself in place. Now on that hexagonal hole to the left, it's going to get another one of those rib certs. Then we can take our bracket, line it up with the hole on top. You can see the threads poke through and these two slotted holes will line up with the other two holes. And for the meantime, I'm just going to get the hardware loosely threaded in to just keep it up in place. Now for that top M10 threads, we're gonna have a large flat washer, the split washer, and the M10 nut. Rotating that nut plate into position that we showed you earlier, we're going to take the same M8 hardware combination that we use over on that first bracket, thread it into the nut plate, and also into that rib cert. Then with it loosely threaded into all three, we can repeat that process of expanding the rib cert, being sure to put pressure on the bracket to keep it slotted in place. The rear bracket here is going to be kind of a combination of the first two brackets. That's going to get the rib cert in the left slot, the nut plate in the right slot with the threads of the nut plate coming out the top of the bracket. And then much like the front bracket, those two angled holes will line up with the two angled holes on the truck. That'll get those two smaller M6 screws with flat washers and flange nuts on the other side. We'll show you the completed product, but it's gonna be the same process that we used for those first two brackets. Now the bracket at the very rear for the rubber isolator, that one's going to be a little bit different. That's gonna involve a little bit of drilling, but it's really not too bad. And your kit comes with these drill templates, which actually work really well. 
So with this, I'm gonna point out some things on the drill template. It might be a little hard to read the text, but on the bottom here, it says align with open end of the bed rail. And then on the side, it says align with thin bed wall. We're gonna go up there and show you what that looks like. Now up here, we can see the thin bed wall right here. That's this piece. And then this is the bed rail. The open side is right in here where the curved section is. The driver's side template is luckily really easy to follow because we've got this cut out, but on the passenger side, it's pretty much just a rectangle. Something I did to help keep it straight is draw some arrows. So this one points towards the outside edge of the truck. This one points towards the cab. So whenever we cut it out, it's in the right position. Again, for this one, just match it up with the shape, but for the passenger side, that's a helpful trick. With the template cut out and taped up in place, I'm gonna grab a center punch and mark my holes. Luckily, the template shows us right where to go with those. So I'm just going to make some markings and then drill some pilot holes once those are made. With the holes marked, I'm gonna draw a pilot hole and then follow that up with a half inch drill bit for our final size. With those two holes drilled out, we can start attaching our hardware. We can then take the fish wire that's included in our kit and feed the threaded end up through the innermost hole that we just drilled out and thread on one of our nut plates that we've been using for the other brackets. That will feed out from the outside of the bed rail, thread into the nut plate and then that will pull back through until the threads pop out the bottom. I'm just going to unthread this right now and we'll repeat that process for that outer hole but honestly you don't need to do the pull wire you can just put it right in. The smaller part of our bracket is going to install with those threads the wedge shape is gonna be towards the outside of the vehicle, leaving this open section towards the back on the driver's side here. And it'll secure underneath with our large M10 flat washer, split lock washer, and nut. With the large bracket, we can take our rubber isolator. It separates into two sections. So this part with the metal ring can drop down through the top then I'm going to crouch down and get the other piece. For the bottom, those two will sandwich together around the larger bracket, just like that. And then we're going to have a large M10 bolt, lock washer, and then a very large flat washer that will feed from the bottom to the top and thread into that smaller bracket we just attached up top. Just like everything else, this is staying loose for the time being. With the brackets all in place, we can turn our attention to the boards themselves. Now these are gonna ship in two separate pieces. The longer one in front of you that has this sort of blank spot with a bunch of slotted holes, that's gonna go towards the rear of the vehicle. And then the shorter section will be towards the front. Then you're going to have a step piece that has all of these tabs that will eventually line up with some of these slotted holes. Now, with that also, you can see it reads Weston on the steps. Those will face outward, so whenever you're getting into the vehicle, you can actually read them. So that's how you can tell which side is which. So I'm gonna put the two pieces together. If you're doing this on your truck bed, just be careful that they don't tip and fall before they're attached. And you can see with the slotted holes here, how they line up with the tabs here. So for our step, what I'm gonna do is actually get those tabs in place and then just push down on the front and you'll feel it kind of snap in. That's gonna help hold the two pieces together, but we can flip it upside down and actually secure it. To keep those tabs from moving around, we're gonna take the supplied thread cutting nuts, place them over top and just run those down on all of those tabs. We can then grab our two reinforcement links 
These are going to be the two angled plates with threaded holes, four of them in total. And they're going to be two different sizes, so just set those to the side. We'll need our link plate, which is this large backing plate, again, with four threaded holes in the middle. And then our M6 hardware. That's going to be the M6 bolts, lock washer, and flat washer. Now, it's important to point out here, so far when we've been doing our M6 or M8 hardware, we've been using the yellow zinc coated ones. I'm using the black zinc coated ones here since these are a little bit more visible on the bottom of our steps. Your kit includes both. I've just been using the black ones for parts on the step here. So you can do the same thing if you'd like, just to give it a more clean look. We've got the thicker part of our step towards the cab of the truck right now, just so you can tell our orientation. And we've got the threaded holes facing up on both of those reinforcement links with the lower part facing towards the cab of the truck. The smaller one is going to go on the smaller section of the running board with those threaded holes lining up as best they can with these slotted holes here. And then same thing for the larger plate sliding into that larger section of the step lining up with the holes. The link plate here that's going to attach with the bent lip portion right here towards the thinner section of the step, lining up all of our holes together and using the M6 hardware to feed down through the link plate, the step, and into the reinforcement link in the back. With the link plate here, there's eight holes and only six screws. Four of those screws, two for each side, are gonna go on the rear set of the board and then Two of them, one on each side, are going to go on the front section. The two open holes eventually will be used on one of our mounting brackets, so just make sure you have those two open so that we can thread into it later. Then you can just run those down, and since they are slotted holes, I'm going to actually kind of bring that link plate down towards the top of those slotted holes and make sure everything is lined up between the two pieces. If I tilt it up, you can see there's a little bit of a gap there. So I'm just going to try to hold that closed and even while I'm tightening. With the step fully assembled, we can take these two flanged M10 bolts. Like I said, those are what's going to thread into these two threaded holes here by the open slots. We can take the assembled step and set it on top of our brackets. Again, lining that link plate up with the center bracket right between our two doors here. It can help to have an extra set of hands at this point to help hold it in place, but it is doable on your own. Taking those M10 bolts, threading them up through the bracket and into the threaded holes on the link plate. Once these are secured in place, the step will at least hold itself up on there. I would recommend keeping a hand on it, but if you need to let go, it's not gonna go anywhere. It might twist and shift a little bit, but it's at least secured up there holding itself up. For the remaining three brackets, we're gonna take these plate adapters. It's these U-shaped plates with the threaded bolts sticking down through. The lips there are gonna grab onto the inside edges of the step. So just feed it up, let those lips grab on, and make sure those threads pass down through the bracket. Again, this is gonna be the exact same process for the other three brackets, and we'll secure it in place using a flat washer, lock washer, and a nut. Again, using the black zinc coated ones for all those locations, keeping things nice and loose. With the step attached to all of the brackets loosely, I'm gonna start tightening and torquing things down, starting with the brackets that actually attach to our vehicle. Once those are tight, I can make my final adjustments on the step, tighten those down, and then we can finally install our covers. So just so you know what order I'm going in and why I'm going in that order. And those torque specifications can be found in your instructions for all of the remaining hardware. With all of the brackets tightened down and torqued, 
you can see now we've just got movement in our step. And really that's just the front to back in those slotted holes. At this point, you can just start tightening them down and torquing those, but making sure that the step is positioned how you want it. I'm pretty much gonna bring it out as far as it'll go on all of those slotted holes, because right here, everything is level and even with itself. So you can start tightening those down and then also torquing them. The last thing we need to worry about is our cover pieces. On the three main brackets, that's excluding the isolator bracket back here, there's gonna be two slotted holes. And then for our covers, there's going to be two holes that line up with this section right here. There's a third hole at the top that just goes through the single piece of plastic, but you don't need to worry about that. Basically, we're gonna have two of these M6 bolts with washers pass through each of those holes. I'll get this in position real quick and you want it with the Weston logo facing up. We'll get that into position here. Feed that first screw through. Pass it through to the other side and follow that up with another washer and then a lock nut. Repeat that process for the other hole. Tighten these down in your desired position with two 10 millimeter wrenches. Ideally, one of them being a ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench to help you do this a little faster and securing it in whatever position you like the best. It's more helpful to have someone hold this from the other side while you tighten it so they can be your eyes and let you know if it's in a good position, especially while those screws are loose. My cameraman, John, helped me hold this in place while I tighten the first one. And now I can just tighten the second one in place like this. Once the covers are installed, you're done. I always like to take a step on all the different points and just see how it feels, make sure that nothing's shifting or moving around on me and that I feel solid and everything's staying where it should. Right now, everything is looking really great for our running boards on all the locations. So I'd say we're all wrapped up with the install. Overall, it was pretty involved just with the amount of hardware you get in the instructions and the instructions being somewhat poorly documented in my opinion. But once you get the hang of it, you do one side, the other side is leaps and bounds easier and it moves a lot quicker after that. Again, it's totally doable on the ground even though we had it up in the air for the lifts. The passenger side, I actually installed completely on the ground and it was really okay. But that'll do it for a look and installation of these Weston running boards on our 2023 Ram 2500. Thanks for watching.